Financial statement fraud and management overrides continue to plague the business world. They are facilitated by manual processes like journal entries, which continue to leave businesses exposed to significant losses due to fraud. Could this happen in your shop? Not if you understand the basics of how general journal entries should be used and recognize the red flags for potentially fraudulent journal entries. Make sure you, you stick around until the end when we identify 10 red flags that could signal you have an ongoing fraud at your organization. This directly impacts accounting, invoices, accounts payable, and most recently, accounting automation. It happens more frequently than most realize, and when it does, it is deadly. The ACFE says that while financial statement fraud schemes are the least common among all types of employee fraud, they are the most costly. Let's get some of the basics out of the way before we delve into the red flags everyone needs to know to be able to recognize a potential financial statement fraud. Let's start off by examining what is a management override. Management override refers to the ability of management to manipulate accounting records and prepare fraudulent financial statements by overriding these concerns. And by the way, when we use the term management here, we also mean those charged with governance. One of the ways they do this is by putting through journal entries. Now I want to make two things clear about journal entries. Most that are put through are perfectly legitimate and are done in the normal course of business. So just because the transaction gets on the books through a manual journal entry, that doesn't make it fraudulent. Two, fraud journal entries can be created by a number of employees, not just management doing a management override. Although in an ideal world, there would be no management overrides. One other thing, not every single management override is fraud, but it does open up the door. Now to make sure we're all on the same page, Let's start with a brief explanation of what we mean by journal entries. What are journal entries? Very simply put, a journal entry is a record of a business transaction in the accounting books of a business. Every transaction involves two journal entries, a debit and a credit. At its most basic level, the data includes the accounts affected and the corresponding amounts for both debits and credits. Sometimes a journal entry also includes a reference number which may be referred to as a journal entry number. It may also include a brief description, if appropriate, and if the particular ERP permits it. Why are journal entries used? The purpose of a journal entry is to accurately record every business transaction. Journal entries are used for three reasons, and one unfortunately is not good. They are one, to record the transactions as discussed. Two, to fix errors in previously recorded transactions. And three, sadly, to fix the books while facilitating a fraud. Obviously, you want to avoid the last one at all costs. One way to do that is to limit errors and put lots of controls and eyes around all journal entries. How to make a journal entry? Succinctly, debit money that flows into the account and a credit is the money that flows out of the account. Here's what you need to remember. A credit is always on the right side of a journal entry. It increases the owner's equity, liabilities, and revenue when credit. A debit, on the other hand, is always on the left side of the entry. It increases assets and expenses when debited. At the end of the journal entry, the credit and debit balance should equal each other. If they don't, double check because you've probably made a mistake. But that's not all. Adjusting entries are used to update previously recorded journal entries. They ensure that the recordings line up to the correct accounting periods. This does not mean that those transactions are deleted or erased, though. Adjusting entries are new transactions that keep the business finances up to date. They're usually made at the end of an accounting period. They include items like prepaid expenses, unearned revenue, accrued revenue, and your accounting software now will make the majority of your journal entries directly into the general ledger as you receive invoices and reconcile payment payments using linked business bank accounts, etc. Businesses may still need to make manual journal entries for month-end adjustments, depreciation expenses, and transactions that haven't used the business bank accounts. They might also include items like prepaid expenses, unearned revenue, accrued revenue, and accrued expenses. Now let's turn our attention to how to spot a fraudulent journal entry. But before we get to that, if you're getting any value from this talk, I would love it if you would give us a thumbs up or hit the like button. It lets me know that I'm on the right track for this channel 
and should create more talks like this. Thanks to everyone who has liked this set. So how can you spot a fraudulent journal entry? As mentioned earlier, occasionally a conniving employee will use a journal entry to hide a fraudulent transaction. Sadly, this will sometimes permit an ongoing fraud to go on for much longer than it should, because let's face it, who looks for fraudulent journal entries? But you should look for journal entries that don't make sense. They could indicate fraud, but they could also indicate another problem. Maybe someone's making a lot of mistakes that need to be corrected. To be clear, just because a journal entry exhibits some of the red flags we are about to discuss does not mean it is fraudulent. You'll need to do a little bit of research, look at the supporting documentation, and talk to a few people before you confront the person who created the transaction. And when you talk to that person, make sure you have someone from HR with you and probably your boss. In fact, they may want to handle that encounter without you. And if you're anything like me, you actually might prefer that. All right, but enough about that. Let's get on with it. Here are some red flags to help you identify journal entries that deserve a little bit of extra scrutiny, if you will. Red flag number one. The journal entry was made by someone who normally doesn't make journal entries. Red flag number two. The journal entry is made at the end of the reporting period, as many legitimate ones are, or right after the closing, and they have little or no documentation. Red flag number three. The journal entry is made to an unrelated account. Now, occasionally this happens when someone is trying to charge something to the wrong account because let's say they're over budget on the account it should be made to but that's not right either. Red flag number four, the journal entry is made to a seldom used account or an inactive account. Red flag number five, the journal entry is made to an account that has significant estimates and end of the period adjustments. This makes it easier to hide that fraudulent transaction. Red flag number six, the journal entry is made to an account that contains complex transactions, again, making it easier to hide a fraudulent transaction. Red flag number seven, the journal entry is put through at the very last minute, perhaps during the preparation of the financial statement. Red flag number eight, the journal entry or numerous journal entries are right below the approval threshold of the person making that entry. Red flag number nine, round numbers. Fraudulent transactions of all sorts are much like more likely to be round numbers. Let's face it. Most of our activity is in odd dollar amounts. If the person putting through the fraudulent journal entry is smart, they'll put through $101,642.11, not an even 100,000. How can you find these even amounts? Use the mod function in Excel. Red flag number 10, the journal entry is made to an account that has a history of having many errors. Journal entries are not the only places you can find red flags indicating potential fraud. To help our listeners, we recently did a talk on 13 red flags, 13 signals anyone, including you, can use to recognize if someone is trying to scam or defraud them. You can watch it right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description. Stay safe.